Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news happening in Oak Park tonight where a police investigation is now underway. That scene is on high school property. Jacqueline Francis is there live. Jacqueline, what can you tell us? Kimberly and Devin, there was a high school basketball game tonight here at Oak Park High School. Just a few hours ago, this place was packed with parents, students, players, you name it. Now, as you can see, it's the center of a police investigation. What exactly happened here? That we don't know. All police will tell us is that they're handling a situation at the high school right now. You're looking at an officer who appears to be searching for shell casings. There were more officers here just a few moments ago before they left the scene. And again, we are still waiting to find out if anyone was shot, if there was a shooting or what exactly happened here. And as we wait to hear from police, I want to give you an idea of just how close the police station is right across the street from the high school, not even 100 yards from here. That is where the Oak Park police station is located. So you can imagine that response time was fairly quick. And as we wait to hear from police again, there are still investigators on scene, but we'll be sure to keep you posted. Reporting live from Oak Park High School, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. OK, Jacqueline, thank you. Our other top story tonight, it is the busiest animal shelter in the state of Michigan. And as of tonight, Detroit Animal Care and Control no longer has a vet. The call going out tonight for help after the shelter's longtime vet has moved on to a new opportunity. The city has been actively recruiting for months, but like so many other industries, finding vets is at a premium right now. Mar McDonald is live at the shelter tonight. And Mara, for starters, they need interim help right away. Kimberly, they sure do, and I want to show you something. You know, you talked about how other industries have suffered looking for staffing. It's no different here. They have a staffing problem to begin with, but now it's a veterinary care issue. They have no veterinary care staff, so the immediate ask tonight is, are there any local vets out there who could come in here on a temporary basis and help out? Let me show you. The volume of animals that comes through this shelter is staggering. No other shelter in the state handles more dogs. Uh, we're facing the same challenge that shelters across the United States are, and that is that there is a shortage of shelter vets. Detroit Animal Care and Control has been looking for a year. As of 5 p.m. today, its longtime vet is moving on. For now, the nonprofit, which raises money to help the shelter, is assisting with emergency care. If we get in an animal that needs emergency medical care, we do have plans um, to address that as a on an as need basis. Here's the ask. Would any local vets be available to come once a week to assist until full time staff can be found? Plus, the nonprofit is looking for partnerships with veterinary hospitals to do spay and neuter surgeries. <laughs> In addition to the immediate veterinary needs, Detroit Animal Care and Control always, and I mean always, needs fosters. If someone is willing to open their hearts and their homes to a new pet, now is the time. If they're looking to foster, adopt, foster fail to adopt, or even be willing to you know, take an animal out for a break and take it on a dog venture and go to their favorite restaurant, we're looking for folks to come in. Back here live, if you know anyone who would be a good fit for the senior vet job here or a vet tech job here at Detroit Animal Care and Control, head on over to Click on Detroit. We've got the info on where to apply. In addition, we've got info on how to contact the nonprofit that helps out DACC. And one more thing, you heard about the need for fosters. They always need volunteers. We're live at Detroit Animal Care and Control. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara. Well, we are following a very dramatic night again in Washington. A 14th vote is underway right now for Speaker of the House. You're looking at live pictures of the House floor. Kevin McCarthy spent the day working to round up those final votes before tonight's session. He made big gains earlier, winning over a good portion of the far right members who have been blocking him from becoming House Speaker. And in exchange, uh, McCarthy, of course, made a, a number of concessions. Uh, some of the holdouts have said that they would remain firm. We thought, though, that he was going to finally reach the threshold just about uh, 10 or 15 minutes ago as they took this most recent vote. But then Matt Gates, who was not present to cast his vote when originally called, at the end came back into the chamber and voted present, which is not the same as voting for or against, but it changes the math of how many votes McCarthy needs. By voting present, it would appear that once again, 
Kevin McCarthy has been denied the speakership. And since then, we have watched some very tense exchanges here on the House floor. A few moments ago, McCarthy was talking to Matt Gates, and then right after that conversation, Mike Rogers, not the former congressman from Michigan, but Mike Rogers, the congressman from Alabama, uh, looked like he was very nearly about to come to blows with Gates and had to be pulled away from him. It is a, a very tense night right now in Washington as uh, we're watching a lot, of, a lot of scenes that, frankly, we don't usually see. Yeah. These C-SPAN pictures are often under a, a different code of set of rules that are laid down by guess who? The Speaker. the Speaker of the House. There isn't one right now, so we are seeing and hearing scenes on the Capitol floor that we don't usually get to see. Uh, but there's a number of people still right now around Matt Gates talking to him. There's another group collected around McCarthy. Who knows where this is going, but it has not taken this many votes to find a Speaker of the House, the United States House of Representatives, in about 150 years. Really incredible. Yeah. yeah. We'll let you know what happens. <laughs> All right. But other news that we're following tonight. A 16-year-old is killed, an 11-year-old girl injured in a shooting at a home on Detroit's west side. It happened early this morning around 1230 on Freeland Street. That's near Hubble Avenue and Linden. Police say two girls were inside the home when someone fired shots from outside. Police tell us five children were inside ages 7 to 16 with no adults there at the time. The 11 year old girl who survived is now at the hospital in serious condition. Looking at, uh, at every angle, every aspect, including uh, perhaps some confrontations that may have happened at, at her school uh, before uh, school let out for the holiday break. Police say this appears to have been a drive by shooting and believe the shooter was in a white SUV. Tonight, Detroit police need your help in finding a carjacking suspect who struck twice within minutes. Police releasing this video of the suspect who they say carjacked two people within 25 minutes on New Year's Day morning. First carjacking happening at 4.30 a.m. in the 18,000 block of Dequinder. 21 minutes later, he struck again a few miles west of there. During both incidents, he was accompanied by two other men. If you have any information about what happened, anything that might help in the investigation, Call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. All right, it might not have been that cold this week, but we uh, sure have missed the sun. Yeah, <laughs> forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams here with maybe some sunshine coming our way finally here <laughs> while we're looking at snow tonight. <laughs> right. I know we have to just we always have to be patient around here, but it it will come. It's just going to take a little time outside right now. Just a, a sort of a soupy night. Very uh, gray and foggy. We have got a little drizzle out there as well and temperatures we're watching pretty closely because they are at or near freezing in many locations, but the ground temperature is still around 38 degrees. So most of what falls is melting on contact 32 in Adrian 34 in Pontiac 33 in Howell 34 in Detroit exact track 40 radar still showing some very light snow showers and also some rain showers as well. For the most part on the uh, east side here we've got Hamtramck. Harper Woods, the gross points, just kind of a misty light rain. And then when you head a little bit more toward the west, you can see some snow showers right now in parts of Northville, Novi, Plymouth, also uh, Salem and Northville. So and this is where it's kind of stayed for quite some time tonight. In fact, the last couple of hours. So we'll still see this going on for the next at least hour or two and then Tomorrow morning, everything should be just cloudy by the afternoon, hoping to get a little sunshine temperatures right now. Again, we're watching very closely just above freezing. I'll have that weekend forecast for you coming up in a few minutes. All right, Kim, tonight's Mega Millions jackpot sits at $940 million and ranks the sixth largest in U.S. history. Let's check the tickets. Tonight's winning numbers are 3, 20, 46, 59, 63, the Mega Ball is 13. Mm. So good luck. We'll see if there's a winner. <laughs>